Good day, people. It's uh, Ian here from uh, FPV Power, and just going to uh, take an opportunity just to show you the uh, 48 volt supercapacitor by Maxwell Technologies, which is now bought over by Tesla, uh, the electric car company. So, the 48 volt, as you can see here, uh, this is a shipment that has just arrived. Um, this is the original, as taken off uh, from the electric trains. As you can see, uh, it is quite a large size. The data sheet has all the specs. It's about 13 and a half kilos. So not the heaviest thing, but not the lightest thing as well, uh, given that, yeah, 13 and a half kilos, 48 volt, uh, and it's that big, as you can see, comparison, my hands. Um, and moving uh, down to this here, this is the 16 volt uh, super cap, which we've made available. Basically, this is a disassembled from an original 48 volt bank and with the um, there's 18 caps to make the 48 volt meaning there is they are 2.6 volt each and there's 18 1 2 3 4 5 6 in the middle row 1 2 3 4 5 6 and in the uh, third row 1 2 3 4 5 6 to give you the 48 and one row of six 1 2 3 4 5 6 gives you the 16 volt 16 times 3 equals 48 and why do we want to do that with a 16 volt? Because a 16 volt um, will work very well with 12 volt applications, such as car, any 12 volt systems, uh, solar panel 12 volt systems, and being 16 volts, you can, you can um, handle any voltages up to 16 volt. With capacitors, whether normal capacitors or super capacitors, where these are, or, or ultra capacitors, um, they are rated to the maximum voltage. So 16 volt is rated maximum 16 volt. 48 is rated maximum 48 volt. So um, 48 volt battery system, uh, people are using these to parallel with. So what you need to do is you need a 48 volt um, bank plus a 16 to give you, uh, let's how do we do this, uh, negative, negative this side. So essentially you've got negative, <coughs> positive 48. This will be linked up in series to this negative and then the positive there. So it's 48 plus 16 volt, which gives you about, uh, I believe, 60, 64 volts, uh, if I'm not mistaken. 48 plus 16 is 64 volt. Um, the other thing I want to show you is, um, even though we've dis disassembled these from the original 48 volt, what we do is, if you notice here, uh, let's see the reflection. Can you see how there's a board installed right there so right there there is a board which we install and this is the equalization board because the original 48 volt maxwell <coughs> the equalization board is up on, on this top part which looks after each 48 bank uh, each 48 cells to make up this 48 volt bank so what we do here is after we disassemble it the the, the original 48 volt equalizing board is redundant we throw it in the bin can't be used and then we purchase brand new equalizing board and we install it onto the 16. As you can see, that's one of the wires going. So in simple terms, <coughs> the equalization board is responsible of maintaining, uh, making sure that all the cells are even, the voltages are even, and they will only work uh, with you working within the parameters of the voltage. So 16 volt, maximum charging 16 volts, um, and as one of the cells is slightly higher than the other, guess what, the battery management system board will go to work, and when it's working, you put your hand here, you'll be like, woo, nice and toasty, you know? Uh, and the same thing here, which you're not gonna feel much of the heat coming out of here, but if uh, you're within the 48 volt, um, at, if any of the cells are slightly higher, that equalization board will take care of and make and bump that uh, using resistors and some uh, IC chips, so it's got some intelligence to monitor all your individual cells and make sure that uh, none of them go over 2.7 volts. So yes, just to recap, um, it has a built-in equalization board, which we put in after we disassemble from the 48 volt bank. The original 48 volt equalization board is thrown in the bin, can't be used. We put in new ones, hence we're charging $150 for the 16 volt bank, and then the $300 for the original bank unused. <clears throat> so the question people might ask is, um, if I need a 24 volt system, which you need two of the 16, to make 32 so you can run 24 volts which charge up to about 28 29 volts um, or do i just spend 300 bucks and just pick up the original 48 volt 
because it's still $300 for one of these, or 48 volt, or $300 for two of these, 150 times two. So the thing is, you would, if you're working with 24 volt system, using a 48 volt system, you are way off the mark as far as maximum performance. Um, so it is always best to pick up 216, which gives you 32 volts maximum, and you're only char you charge into 28, 29 volt. So you're not far off from 32. So 20, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. You're four volts off versus 48 volt, um, uh, and the difference 48 to 28, 29, it is huge a voltage. So in other words, is the capacitor is not even full. You're only giving you that much. Whereas with these. Uh, in in series, you charge them up to nearly full, and it's able to dump the whole lot whenever you need it uh, for the high high current discharge. And some people might wonder if you're going to crunch some numbers: is why is this three hundred dollars, and why is this one hundred and fifty dollars each when we can salvage three of them out of these three hundred dollars? Well, it's because of the labour that is involved in taking this apart. It's very tedious. Could be very careful. Um, not to short circuit, and also to break the internal connections, which is very delicate, um, and hence the labor involved. And also not to mention, we have to purchase three brand new uh, equalizing board to install it in these. So they're all um, protected from maximum voltage of 2.7 volts. Hence, we're selling it for 150 uh, versus 300 straight off into your hands. And of course, they're all testers. So there's three variants, six mil, uh, bolts M6 at 90 degrees, or you get a uh, one side which is I believe it will be a M8 vertical vertical M8, and then you get a, a one variance which will be a uh, M10 vertical with an M6. So that should explain that there is M6 M6, and then there is a M6 M8, and then there's also a M6 M10 because the negative is. 10 mil and then the positive is 8 mil so that's the only variance uh, and yeah you just need to size up your lugs accordingly and we ship these out randomly so there's um, uh, as as we take them we ship them out and you can get either one of those three so now I'm just going to touch on charging your super caps um, if you're going to before you use them always have them charged before you pay, uh, put them in parallel to any batteries make sure that they are charged um, within one bolt to the battery that you're going to parallel them with so I'm just going to show you how to do it. I've got a charger here. Now just for an example, this is a 48 volt 5 amp charger. <clears throat> so disregard the voltage, um, even though I'm going to monitor it, but it is a 5 amp. So, just give, so this whole example is going to show you what a, how fast it actually charged with a 5 amp charger. So safety first, you've got your charger there. Most, most likely you would have a uh, 12 volt lead acid car battery charger. Uh, in fact, any charger will do. Um, it can be even higher than the 16 volt, but because you're manually uh, monitoring it, you can be able to uh, disconnect whenever it it's reaches the uh, the intended voltage. So what I'm going to do is black, negative to black, with the charger turned off. I'm just going to just, and we turn it on when it's safe. Light it down, and I'm going to get a voltage reading of the capacitor. So your capacitor would be around 3, 4, 5 volts, depending. Uh, so it should be around there. So what's this? Yep, 3.74 volts uh, on, on the uh, uh, capacitor. I'm just going to clamp down on my, um, what do you call it, on my uh, multimeter probes so that I can be hands free, like so. 3.74, I'm going to turn the, the charger on and you can see how fast it charges from 3.74 at 5 amps. Charger is going. This is at 5 amps, very low. Your, your charges could be some of them are 2 amps, some of them are let's say uh, 20 amps, and if at 20 amps it's going to be much much faster. <coughs> it's risen up to um, 4 volts already. And the charger is slightly making a little bit of a noise as the voltage is starting to catch up. Because mind you this is a 48 volt charger. Uh, we charge the bigger caps with this charger at 5 amps. Um, 4.5 volts. Now yeah, this time I'm going to speed the video up, uh, so we're not going to be sitting here for too long.
Okay, so we were charging at a 5 amp charger before. Now I'm changed over to a, um, <laughs> this is still not a 24, uh, this is still not a 12 volt, this is a 24 volt uh, charger. I just don't have a 12 volt charger lying around at the moment. And this is a 20 amp charger. So let's see where the voltage is at 4.72. Uh, Turn it on, and this is at 20 amps. There we go. 5.5 volts. So we're coming at 5.5. 5.6 as you can see it is much faster versus uh, the 5 amp charger so I'm just going to let it go all the way 6 volts so it's climbing very very rapidly as you can see that you can actually watch it uh, instead of a generally with a battery if it's a battery it's going to take you a long time to charge you will not see voltage creep up like this so we're up to 7 volts, more than halfway there, or nearly halfway there. If it's for car use, you'd be charging it to around 12, 12, 12 point something, uh, and your alternator would take it up to um, about 14.4 or 13.8, 14.4 or so, which is well below the uh, 16 volts maximum. So getting up to 8.4 volts. 8.5 so when you want to uh, match a battery get it to approximately if you can get a spot on get a spot on um, if you're over by one volt um, it's not a big difference if you're under by one volt it's not a big difference uh, and if you're over by two volts it is generally not too much of an issue uh, if you're under by two volts then yeah, try not to. Um, it is not hard to get it accurate, um, as you can see with a multimeter and a charger. Once it reaches the uh, the voltage, bang, turn it off, uh, and then you can uh, connect in parallel. If you don't do this, at with the super cap being a three at three volts or three point something, and you've got a battery which is at twelve point something volts, when you make the connection. Guess what? You connect your positive to positive, and then when you make the connection on the negative, or vice versa, it's going to go spark and bang and drain hundreds of amps trying to get the 13 volt, uh, the 3 volts up to the battery volt. So you're actually uh, drawing hundreds of amps from your battery, which is not good, and the spark is not a good thing either. Just want to clarify that it is not good for the battery, but it will not damage or cause any harm whatsoever to your supercapacitor. So I'm at 12 points, you know, 12.1. 12.2, so we're nearly there. I'm going to take it to 13 volts. Because we're reading the voltage as the charger is connected to the terminals. Once you take it off, the voltage there will be a voltage difference. So yeah, 13 volts. There we go, disconnect. And make sure you don't touch your leads or you're going to blow the fuse in your, on your charger. So it's just going to slightly stabilize. Oh, there we go. Now she's, uh, she's holding 12.99. So, yeah, well, she's up there. Um, like we said before, if you are within one volt of your intended uh, voltage, this is perfect. So, 12.97. And if I leave it for another 10 minutes or so, she made me 12.8 and stabilize there. So, that's it. That's charging with a 5 amp charger. And the second part was charging with a 20 amp charger. As you can see, everything happens very, very quickly with a 20 amp. Um, and there's a cheating way of doing it. If you are, if you don't have a charger on you, and you've got jumper leads, and uh, and you, and you're not afraid of sparks and zaps, what you can do is essentially put what if this was your battery with heavy duty jumper leads, <coughs> you would be touching your positive or negative, vice versa. Just, just for this example, so this is from your battery, which is at 12 volt. And this is a positive lead from your jumper leads. You're just touching it there. And then with this, what you want to do is you want to go bang like that. And just one, two, three, let it go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and let it go. So when you do the initial pulse, there'll be like hundreds of amps trying to get through. As the amp is ramping up, you're actually pulling it off. So in other words, you're actually pulsing it with your jumper leads manually. Try not to pulse it on the bolt. You end up uh, sparking and damaging the bolt. Just sort of like, bang, two seconds, three seconds off. Two, three, off. One, two, three, off. And as you do so, you probably find that if your if if your cables aren't heavy duty, 
um, it doesn't have to be super heavy duty if they are sort of if they are this uh, they will get warm pretty quickly, but if they're heavier gauge, uh, they will not get warm. And of course, you have somebody monitoring the voltage on the multimeter, and as you pulse it, you will see that the voltage is getting up, getting up slowly as you pulse it. And the spark, which initially will be a massive big spark um, from your uh, jump start leads, the copper leads, the alligator clips, um, and as the voltage is getting up and matching the battery, uh, the sparks and zaps will get less and less and less till the end. Um, you can basically hold it down uh, indefinitely and the, and the voltage of the battery will just even up. So I've done that for a while now. Let's see what voltage I'm actually on. Uh, not to exceed the 16 volts, which is not going to exceed the 16 volts. Let's see what we're at. Uh, this will be minus, so I'm at 13.7. 13 point, yes, yeah, 13.77 volts as you can see, you know, just doing, just by tapping it on and off. Um, of course, I'm using a 20 amp charger. And the reason why these chargers don't um, just blow up, because, uh, you know, a super cat will always want to suck as much power as you can, because these chargers are a constant current. They've got a current limiting. Uh, on all chargers, they're all current limiting. Um, if you were to put a, let's say, a power adapter for your laptop or, or, or a power adapter for a 12 volt appliance, and you, put, and you somehow make the leads touch, um, that power adapter would, will blow up straight away because it's gonna. There's no current limiting. It's just providing 12 volt or whatever, 14 volt, or even a 20 volt um, power supply um, that hasn't got constant current. These things is gonna suck it. So to, to destroy these, very very hard. Um, they're very robust. Um, a million cycles on them. The internal resistance are very very low. Uh, still many 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 years uh, out of these. Uh, uh, even if you use it in a rough, um, even you know, uh, put it in your diesel rig, uh, starting diesel engines, uh, put it in sound uh, car audio uses, put it in parallel to a, any existing batteries, whether it's for starting a car or whether it's for a solar uh, solar system, uh, you'll prolong the life of your batteries.